For all hard rock, heavy metal bands needing worldwide exposure at affordable prices, online metal promo PR is taking bands from the underground to above ground. Visit their official website at onlinemetalpromo.net. Onlinemetalpromo.net. Welcome to Rat Saddle Review. I am joined by Riley from the band Titan's Wrath. What's up, Riley? Yeah, how's it going, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, I was sent your band through uh, online metal promo, and uh, it's a really, really great band. Um, oh, it's got that, you. yeah, it's got that old uh, traditional like uh, heavy metal sound, uh, kind of like uh, a little bit like um like a European type thing. It's kind of got some like a uh, Iron Maiden type stuff in there, but it's got some thrash stuff as well. It's a lot of a mixture of like kind of everything that I like. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, you guys are a really good band. Where are you guys from? Oh, we're out of San Bernardino, California. It's about an hour east of uh, L.A. Um, okay. So, yeah, we we play all over SoCal, but, uh, yeah, we're based out of uh, San Bernardino. Oh, very cool. And uh, you guys just kind of started the band. It was, like, started in, like, 2019, but under, like, a different name. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we formed at the end of 2019 um, as Leviathan, and uh, we played a couple of shows prior to the pandemic, and um, believe it or not, just from those two shows, we actually got confused with several other Leviathans. <laughs> yes, uh, we actually, our first show was at, our first show was at the Whiskey A Go Go opening up for a, uh, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of them. They're called Metalachi. They're a mariachi tribute band, but they do all metal songs in the style of like Mexican mariachi music. Oh, really? That's and, um, so that was our first show and they were promoting it and tagging us and everything and they, we were, you know, we were looking at the comments and people were like, oh, is it the Leviathan from Sweden? Is it this Leviathan? You know, people were thinking it was like the Chris Barnes Leviathan from like the 90s, you know, it was like pre-Cannibal Corpse Band. Right, right. Um, so there was like six or seven different Leviathans. It's kind of like, sorry, guys, but we're not, <laughs> none of them. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> and um, so, you know, we played a couple shows as Leviathan. We recorded our demo. Um, and then, you know, the pandemic happened. And um, we went through a couple of lineup changes as well. And throughout 2020, we just kind of restructured. Um, you know, we really like the whole Leviathan theme. You know, that we, it, it's a badass name, but it's a very right. common, commonly used name. So we're going to go with like the Leviathan's Wrath or just Titan. And then um, Tito, our other guitar player, came up with Titan's Wrath. And, uh, you know, that name stuck. And uh, no one else has that name, you know. So it was like... It, it worked out. It was finally a name, you know, that nobody had taken. So uh, we ran with it. And then it wasn't probably until about early 2021 where we kind of started getting the gears uh, rolling in. Yeah. So, uh, you know, ever since then, we've been pretty much at it. Cool. Now, uh, why did some guys leave the band? It was it... Well, there were some personal differences, um, you know, in songwriting. You know, we had, uh, you know, everyone has, a, you know, some different tastes. Um, you know, me... You know, me and the singer and Tito, the other guitar player, we're, we were very more old school, as you could hear in the music, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say me, me and Tito are more of the main songwriters of the band, and the two other guys, they're more into the modern stuff, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but they just didn't really care for that direction that we were going to go to. But it worked out because, you know, we got, um, you know, it was our bass player and our drummer. So, you know, we have our drummer, Angel, right now, who he's a death metal guy, but um, it is kind of cool. You know, he's kind of always said like, he's always wanted to do a heavy metal style project, but no one else in, in Southern California. I don't know. Cause uh, uh, you're from New York. Yeah. Or yeah. You're back East, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's the same out there, but at least in Southern California, majority of the bands out here are uh, death and thrash metal. Ah, okay. So, so we're always the odd man out, which I, I love both those genres of uh, metal, but um, a lot of the shows we play were kind of the odd man out. So, you know, mm. he's really, you know, it was really cool to hear him say, like, you know, I've always wanted to be in like a traditional style, you know, band. And then our bass player, Dennis, who we ended up getting, I was jamming in a cover band with him for a little while, and that's how I met him. And he, uh, 
I don't know if you're familiar with Heretic, uh, Mike Howie's band prior to he when he before he joined uh, Metal Church. Oh yes, yep, okay, yep. So That's he was in Heretic, and then oh. um, after Mike Howie joined Metal Church, um, they kind of swapped singers. So they took uh, David Wayne, the original Metal Church singer, and they became Reverend. And right. so that's where um so he was in reverend um you know he, the dude's been all over and played you know all over and so it's really cool um he's the oldest guy in the band but it's cool because it's like we'll play shows and he gets recognized you know right, right, people, yeah. oh shit you're dennis o'hara from heretic and it's like dude like like i had never <laughs> heard that band until he said it and i kind of thought he was bsing me for a lot of that because he was talking about opening up for slayer metallica you know all these big bands right um but you know, sure enough, I, was, I looked into it, and it, it's all true, dude. You know, and so you know, to have him on board, you know, and he helps write a lot of the songs too. So it's it kind of was for the better, in my opinion. You know, right, right, yeah. I was gonna say because you you're pretty young. How old are you? I'm 45. You're 40. Are you 45. sure? 25. How? Oh, 25. I was gonna say 45. Yeah. You're really young. Just but, uh, an uh, app over there. I'm the youngest <laughs> in the band, but yeah, everyone's about. I think Angel, Tito, and Gary, they're around their late 20s and then Dennis I think I want to say he's in his mid 50s right now um, wow. so we're kind of all over the place but, yeah. um, you know we all kind of it's nice to have all one common goal you know finally in the band you know? yeah. so it's we've had the same lineup since mid 2020 so it's uh, yeah. you know it's been working pretty well cool well it's good you have somebody in the band like that too because he's he's done it already you know so he kind of yeah. knows you know things that you might run into later on down the line that you know maybe you should or yeah, shouldn't and, do, and, you know and, and uh, with promotion too you know he's even had people like hit us up like oh hey i want to help you guys out with promotion and they've given us you know it's, it's free promotion you know a lot of free pr stuff too you know right. so we've been really fortunate with that stuff but it all comes you know from dennis and who you know he's known you know yeah yeah that's cool so um, you released a uh, uh, an EP into the abyss, and then last year, right at the end of December, I think uh, yeah. you released uh, Will of the Beast. Now, mm-hmm. listening to them, there's a little bit of a difference between both. Um, what was the difference between recording the uh, EP to the uh, well, the first EP into the second one? Yeah, so um, it just basically came down to money, honestly. Um, you know, we were kind of on edge about if we want to do an album or not. And it, it's really weird because, you know, I've had people tell me both. Um, you know, luckily now where I'm at, or where I'd say the band's at right now, we've, I've, I've met quite a bit of people more in the middle of the music industry, you know, you know, actually like part of record labels and whatnot. Um, no, nothing like to where we're getting signed, but, you know, just talking and, you know, getting, uh, advice and whatnot and a lot of those guys are telling me you know oh you should do uh, full albums you know and that's what everyone likes and then there's people telling me oh no you should do eps um so that's kind of why we've just done the two eps but really money was came down to that first one we really weren't sure who to go to and we were getting offers um but like people wanted like for five songs it was gonna be like five grand you know and it was like wow. that's you know, we, we can't just do that for five songs. We're just right. dropping, you know. <laughs> and so uh, we had a buddy of mine um, that I ended up meeting through a couple of local bands who ended up doing the recording. And we were pretty happy with it. Like I said, for what we ended up paying for it, um, you know, it came out a little bit better than what we were expecting. We weren't totally ecstatic with the quality of it, but... You know, when it comes to recording, you get what you paid for, you know. If right. going back, I kind of wish we would have waited and saved up, but at the same time, you know, trying to be a band, trying to get out there and promote, you know, you gotta have music coming out. And at that time we only had our demo, which we did that ourselves, and that was that went pretty horribly. <laughs> I was listening um, to that. It's not too bad. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. We, it's, we just had demo, demo, so you know it's, it's, it's doable. Weird. And you know, and the only reason we recorded that demo was because when we were playing shows, people were like, you know, we want to hear you, just do a right. demo really quick. And then so we put that demo out, and then everyone's like, well, this kind of sucks. You know, the quality is just not there. And it's like, we told us just do it, you know? <laughs> so I, I wish we kind of did wait, but, you know, we were really proud of that EP, and it, it was a learning experience. Because then we, when we came into this EP, Will of the Beast, it really, uh, um, you know, we were able to find some pretty cool guys. Um, Art Pais, Pai, 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 um, I don't remember pronounce his last name. He's uh, worked with uh, Hate Eternal, Morbid Angel, and Canada huh. Corpse. Okay. Um, he's more of a death metal guy, but he's based out here in Southern California. So we were able, luckily, to get in contact with him. And he gave us a really good deal because uh, he, he really liked the band. And um, 
you know, he he he's kind of like friends with Tito, the other guitar player in the band. He's kind of known him mm. you know, from the past. And so he gave us a really good deal. And um, so luckily, you know, we were able to actually get into an actual studio, record with, you know, um, real drums, real guitar amps, you know. Um, the other That was the other thing back with the, uh, the first EP, you know, the other guy was like, no, we can just do everything digital, you know. So right. we went through a fractal, you know, we went through a fractal, um, that was like Axe Facts 2, and then, you know, we ended up having to do, uh, he ended up just suggesting we did um, program drums for it. Yeah, I could tell. You know, which <laughs> at first we were kind of like, okay, that's cool, you know, but then like later, you know, you kind of listen to it and it was just like, I like, you know, you could totally tell they're programmed. Right, right. And so, you know, coming into this out, this EP, Will the Beast, is really nice to actually use real guitar amps, real drums, you know, and um, so that's that's pretty much the main difference. You know, we were, at, you know, we actually had a guy who was in the industry who's actually done. Um, you know, not talk bad on Sean, you know, he did a, you know, a great job with what he had, but, yeah. you know, uh, you know, to have someone who's actually part of the industry was actually really cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can tell the difference, you know, there's a big step up from such a short span of time, a, a big step up, I think, yeah. you know, to that yeah. uh, second EP. It sounds good. Both of them sound good, but, uh, the, you know, the second, uh, Will of the Beast yeah. sounds, you know, a lot better. Like you said, it's got all the live instruments and everything. And you actually recorded it in a studio. So it, it made it feel like a, you know, a better album too. Yeah. For so, yeah. Yeah. That do you ever plan on recording a full album? Because like you said, so that's even- what we're kind of talking about right now. Um, I have talked to a few more other people kind of more involved with the industry um, as well. More down, at least more down here in Southern California, I shouldn't say industry, but at least more involved with a lot of bands down here in Southern Cal that uh, mm. are a little bit more professional. Yeah. And, um, for, you know, uh, there was, we, we, we kind of do want to do an album, um, you know, and we were even talking about maybe going back to the demo, taking some of the songs, revamping them, mm. and then maybe writing like four or five more songs and just kind of combine the two. Yeah. Um, but that's still kind of all up in the air. We're not really the same band that we were when we recorded that demo, right. you know, because um, originally... Like I said, uh, the the demo we have out that was originally recorded under Leviathan. So we did that demo back, I want to say, early 2020, right before the pandemic. Mm. So there's actually some Leviathan demos circling around um, that we handed out, but uh, it's it's the same songs. And then it was mid 2020, we ended up re-recording it under Titan's Wrath, and uh, you know, so like I said, but since then, you know. It's almost been three years. We're a little bit of a different band. We're kind of, I think we were definitely writing a little bit more technical than what we were, you know, back in 2020. Right. Yeah. Um, and also the style has changed. You know, originally we were kind of going for more of an old school, like, you know, power metal, like Blind Guardian, you know, kind of style band. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, you know, we're kind of like, you know, we're all big fans of like, you know, a lot of, a lot of death metal bands, but we also still love, you know, like bands like King Diamond and, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of priests. I'm more of a big fan of like the newer priests, so like you know, Painkiller, um, okay, you know, yep. Angel of Retribution. So kind of putting out stuff like more geared towards that, you know, kind of uh, yeah. You can call that genre or that kind of style, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I could definitely hear that on this uh, on the EP, Will of the Beast. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you guys, you know, everybody, because I have two bands, and and when I first yeah. started my other band uh, like two years ago, I wanted to do an EP, and mm-hmm. You know, we just kept writing songs, and I'm like, "Screw it, let's just write, release an album." I don't give a shit if anybody wants an EP or an album to get an album. And even my new band that we just uh, we're going to release an album this year, uh, we didn't know what we were going to do. We we're going to do an EP, and then it ended up turning into an album. But I see a lot of bands, like a lot of the newer and younger younger guys. I'm I'm because I'm really old. I'm not that old, I'm only like forty. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I feel old though. But uh, you know, I just I see a lot of younger guys. They're releasing the EPs, and I don't know if it's the way to go or not. I, I don't know. It's so weird, like how things are now. Like when I was growing up, everything it was cassettes, and and then it turned into CDs, and and now it's back to records again. You know, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, no, and I, we're, I'm in the same boat uh, because uh, your, your your band's a Severed Angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was actually listening. You guys had some uh, some, some red songs. Oh, thanks. Um, but no, it, it, I'm in the same boat because, like I said, you know, I've had people tell me, "No, dude, you guys need to do an album." But then I'm hearing, "Well, people." I personally love an album. I, I yeah, love. Yeah. I could listen to an album all the way through, no problem. But um, 
you know, it, it, it's just kind of, you know, like I said, I'm, I, I get a lot of conflicting news too. Like, oh, you should just do EP. Um, so like kind of like my thought, you know, is, you know, I'd, I'd like to establish a little bit more, not necessarily a fan base, but at least like a, some kind of base, you know, where mm-hmm. we're kind of a little bit known. And then to the point of where I feel like we could actually promote an album, you know, that I think, and like I said, I think we're getting to that point. Um, I don't think I would say like, let's drop an album tomorrow or anything like that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Kind of, and we're, you know, kind of the same thing you said as well about, you know, just keep writing. We've already, you know, we haven't really stopped writing music since 2020. You know, we're already <laughs> sitting on more songs, you know, yeah. and, you know, it, it's like, there's a lot of songs you put out and you're just like, I would really want to, put this out there and then there's a lot of songs you do end up putting out like uh there's a like uh there's one song off of that first ep former gods um we kind of blame that song got kind of messed up there was a, basically i wasn't there for any of that recording and basically sean kind of took over and i wasn't really happy how that song turned out but that's the song i'd like to come back and redo you know mm-hmm. um so it's like a you know constant like do we go back and redo those songs or do we go on and put out the songs that we've been writing, you know? Right, so right, right. technically as of right now, I think we have like 15 songs out, you know? So it's mm-hmm. like, that's an album right there, you know? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's like when we first started uh, putting out stuff, we we, we didn't know, what to, like I said, we didn't know what we were going to do. So anyway, we ended up just releasing singles. So mm-hmm. just to get our name out there. And I think that might have helped a little bit too. I, I don't know. But uh, there's so many things to do, now, especially with the streaming and everything. And yeah. I, I have to get yeah, used to that. that. It, <laughs> and that's always been the third option too is don't even do an ep you just put out singles yeah but that annoys me because then when you go to the apps and stuff all the songs are in separate orders and then, like i just exactly, want it all yeah. in one spot <laughs> and then it's kind of lame if you're doing singles and they all have the same artwork you know you should at least get you know different artwork you know right, exactly yeah at least in my opinion you know even like bands who drop albums they'll do separate artwork for their singles but that's they drop two or three singles if that and then they have their album you know right right um, and it's like you know artwork can get expensive you know unless you have an artist in the band you know and you don't want it to be crappy artwork because you know i, I feel like art really does blend in with the music you know you want something yeah. something someone could look at you know yeah yeah definitely but there's so much art to choose from. Uh, we've been even looking at like the AI art, <laughs> you know, trying oh, to cheat a little bit. Same. And same. a yeah, lot of it's actually, cool, you know. A lot of I see a lot of people like so against it, but you know what? It's it's if you can find one, it looks good enough for what you you want it for. What's the difference? We, honestly, we, we're looking at we were we're we're looking to put out T-shirts pretty soon, and mm. um, we wanted to put the Will of the Beast album cover out, but you know, so much going on that it's a very hard shirt to press you know we've talked to like two or three different uh pressing companies and they, they'll do it but it's just gonna be really expensive so we, we kind of settled back like okay we need to find artwork that's a little bit more easier to uh print yeah. out and same thing uh my boss actually has been really into the ai art and he showed me and i told him all right give me a couple things of like giants fighting or boss you know something like i think he literally typed in like titan's wrath you know and yeah. he came back with these rad photos and i'm like we're gonna use these you know <laughs> with the logo like these would be perfect so we're, we're still trying to get the logistics of the t-shirts made but basically our new t-shirts as of right now it's sounding like they're just gonna be from the ai artwork you know yeah yeah hey, whatever works man uh yeah. suggestion for t-shirts uh if you want to do it on the cheap it doesn't cost you a dime t public Okay, and that's and that's screen printed, but they look very good. I I, I have okay. the podcast shirts done on them, and actually we did did some of our band shirts in them, and um, they actually look pretty good, and they last quite a while because I wear my stuff all the time, and uh, they haven't worn out, they haven't cracked or anything. So just a suggestion: you don't have to spend any money; you, you actually make money from it, not too much, mm-hmm. but you know they take a portion of your profits or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But it's a it's a good thing well, for well, bands like T Public, yeah. T public. Uh, I think it's tpublic.com. Uh, now, does it like do they have like a like do they can do they tell you like what they can do or what they can do? Or you can like, pretty can much they... do anything. Okay, because it's not. Okay. I don't think it's. I don't think it's um a, a, a screen print. I don't know what kind of print it is. You got to read up about it. But like I said, because I was always worried about those ones that they like press onto the shirts or whatever. Because uh, some of those, you know, the the ink or, or whatever, the the image will fade or whatever. But these, I don't, they don't, I don't think they do that. I don't know what they do. 
but whatever they do, it comes out very nice. And um, I've done, like I said, my my show's logo. Uh, we did a couple of band shirts that had a lot of colors going on, and they all came mm-hmm. out pretty pretty decent. They look, I wish I had one here. I'd show you, but I don't. Um, but they look good. They look nice. And like yeah, I said, I it's for a band like like you, like you guys, and like us and stuff. Yeah. Just starting out, and you don't want to spend because I know what shirts cost. You know, to make uh, you know shirts, and then you hope to make your money back from them. You know. Yeah, and it's really weird because you know a lot of places will do death metal shirts. You know, around it, you know we've been looking for places that are a little bit more local and. Um, you know, it's like, well, how come you can do their shirt, but you can't do ours? You know, right. it's like, <laughs> then it's like, you know, then I'm thinking, like, are they really paying like an arm and a leg for each like T-shirt? You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like we got quoted like anywhere from like thirty, forty bucks a T-shirt if they wanted. Wow. To, how the hell do you make any money from that? And I was like, yeah, like I'm not, you know, we were, we were talking about doing like thirty, forty T-shirts, and it's like, no, we're not gonna. No, you can't do it. it. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, we could do like a white with like a black like outline or something. I was like, oh, that's not going to be as cool, you know. So yeah, that's yeah, what we, yeah. But like I said, we, we, I was looking at the T Public, but yeah, we were also looking into doing like this at the AI art. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, definitely find AI, AI art pictures. You can you can definitely put them up on uh, T Public. Yeah. You know? They'll print them right up. So definitely give it a, a check uh, and see because, like I said, it helps out bands because you don't have to spend a dime and you actually make yeah. money. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So, do you guys have any shows or anything booked up? Oh yeah, we've been uh, like so we've been just chilling around Southern Cal. Um, we pretty much play everywhere from LA down to San Diego. Um, okay. Um, so you know, it's, we're pretty fortunate, you know, to get to the point where we're getting asked to play shows, which is kind of cool, you know. Um, yeah. Not very much having to go out. You know, we every now and then we'll go out and ask, but uh, um, you know, we we've been lucky to play a lot of venues around SoCal to the point where, you know, if promoters need a band, they'll hit us up. Um, you know, we, we have about three shows booked in March. I think we have two in April already. Um, and, you know, we're just looking, you know, just kind of looking to stick around for uh, Southern Cal. We do really want to reach out to other States. Um, you know, Vegas is about a four hour trip. Phoenix is like about five. Um, Salt Lake city is about a six hour drive from us. So, we're thinking about maybe starting to do maybe like a weekend a month or every other month of maybe saying if we could book a couple shows in one of these other cities, you know, uh, try to reach, just try to reach out, you know, um, as much as I love playing, you know, Southern California, you know, it's playing the same venues over and over again. It does kind of get a little old. So, you oh, know, yeah. think about, you know, maybe just get running a U-Haul, driving to a town for a weekend and then come back on like a Sunday, you know, because we also have work, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a lot, you know. It, it, it it's already hard getting five guys together to do a show and practice, you know, and all that. But then trying to tour, you know, and we all talk about it. But it's like you, you kind of think of like the logistics of all of it. It's just it's crazy, you know. Yeah, it, it doesn't get easier when you get older, and you get married, and then you have kids too. So it, it's it's like yeah. impossible. And you know, some <laughs> of us are married. You know, I'm not, but some of us are married in the band. Some of us have kids, in, you know, that are in the band. So. You know, that's all stuff you got to think about, you know, yeah. um, well, so, um, and then, you know, other conflicting work schedules and all that. So we, we, we were talking about it and we're thinking maybe hitting Vegas or Phoenix first, seeing if we can get out of state, you know, um, luckily we found some promoters in various different states, you know, and same thing with like Northern California. So uh, we're thinking about doing that. We're also lucky to know a lot of bands who have like toured you know, I was gonna like, say, are you yeah. friends with any like bands from other states where you can like get on the shows with them or anything? Uh, not from other states necessarily yet. Um, just because we haven't really had a lot of, at least um, like we played with it. Like we actually had a show Saturday. And we played with a band from Vegas. Mm. Um, but there's we don't really play with a lot of bands from out of state. You know, there's a lot. Like I said, a lot of it's mostly thrash and death metal. But there's a lot of you know, there's a lot. Of, it, it's a really big scene. You know, to the point yeah. where. You know, you do meet a lot of bands, and they're all local in SoCal. But, uh, um, but no, you know, just through like Facebook and Instagram, we find a lot of like promotion, like companies and like stuff like that, and promoters who book out of state. So, mm. um, so we're we're planning on going through them. You know, like I said, I've been making like a small like list of just like people to hit up. You know, it's like, hey, can we book a show? And even traveling too, like, uh, you know, I have a buddy who moved up to Idaho. Um, and that's a 12, 13 hour drive, but the town he lives in has a little metal scene and, you know, they're like, yeah, come on up and we'll throw a show with you guys, you know, so yeah. uh, even just like networking when you're out of town kind of thing, you know, it's helped us out, so um, we're just looking to maybe just go through like a promoter or something like that, you know. 
Yeah. All right, cool. Well, hopefully maybe sometime you get up to the east here to New York and play a show. Yeah, that'd be really cool. And if you guys can make out to LA, that'd be right too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a long it's a long ride for both of us, but maybe oh, yeah. we'll get there. <laughs> I've never been to LA or California or anywhere out there, so it'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd, like I said, I've heard, I'd really love to play like Florida too. I've heard like the metal scene out there is really uh really cool. Um mm-hmm. yeah, same thing with like New York, you know, everybody we follow I you know, now that I think about it, I think we do follow a few bands from the New York area. Um it's I funny because I, I can't think of like uh, I I know there's like a big uh, punk scene back here again like a hardcore punk scene. You know, and so the one band I was gonna say I think they're called Non Residents. Um, I want to think they're from Brooklyn. They're from like New York, New York, you know, like the big city. Uh, but they're very hardcore, you know, very punk mm-hmm. hardcore. You know, um, yeah, that's what's mainly up here. And not like stuff that we play and you guys play. It's it's very varied up here. It's yeah. Once in, a, once in a while, you can find new bands. Yeah, and, and I mean, and that's what's cool. Like, like you know, I mentioned, you know, we're we're kind of the odd man out with a lot of our shows, but it's cool that a lot of the death metal guys and thrash guys they they, they like the old, you know, Judas Priest, and right? Maiden, yeah. you, know, you know, it it, it, it they, they like that stuff, and we usually will throw in a King Diamond or a, uh, or a Judas Priest tune in our set. Yeah. So that gets people a little bit happy that we'll throw up, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'd say probably the two most popular ones are Painkiller and uh, we do Mansion of Darkness by King Diamond. Okay, all right, cool. So covering those two, um, you know, gets the crowd going. It was kind of neat, but uh, but yeah, you know, it's like I said, we're we're kind of the odd man. There's a couple other traditional metal bands. Uh, if if you ever want to look them up, there's a band, really cool band called Trap Maker. They're from out uh, just south of us um, in a town called Riverside. Uh, Room Seven's another really cool band. Um, Cosmic Dragon is a really great band. They're they're uh, how do you say it? Like a concept band, you know. It's like all futuristic, but it's all power metal, uh-huh. you know. Oh, really? Really, okay. Really cool stuff. Um, so you know, there are a couple other bands, but they're all in the same boat as us. If we're not all playing together, you know, they're all playing with death metal and thrash metal. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what I when back in my first first band, uh, we used to play in Queens in New York all the time, and yeah, we would always mm-hmm. get lumped in with the death metal bands and. You know, we'd be like the odd man out, but it's cool, yeah. you know, because it, it brings variety to the show because you don't want to just hear death metal all night long, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And, and like, <laughs> you know, I, I love thrash and death too, and I have plenty of friends who do all that stuff, you know, and play in those bands. Um, but you know, it's kind of neat to see those guys because that was kind of a warning before I started really getting involved with the scene. Uh, I tried out for a band, and it was a little bit more of like the metal core, kind of more popular metal. Kind of stuff, but you know, I, I think I was like 18 at the time when I tried out. I wasn't even really that good, at, still not. <laughs> but I'm, you know, it, it's uh, you know, I, I didn't even really know what I was doing. But he kind of like warned me about that. You know, he's like, we don't play. He's like, I don't play ever in LA because I don't like playing with all the thrash and death metal bands. You know, they're uh-huh. a bunch. You know, he called them dicks, and I'm, so that was kind of a concern. <laughs> like doing this, you know, like are they gonna like you know when we started branching out, it's like are they gonna really they're going to accept us, you know, and like I said, you know, from our first couple of shows, they accepted us like that, you know, and there's been no, you know, issues or anything like that. You know? But I don't know who bullied this guy, but he, it seemed like he really got hurt. <laughs> I kind of felt a little bad, but like I said, that really put like, you know, doing this, it really put like, you know, kind of put it on my mind. Like, I really hope we don't end up in the same boat as that guy, you know? Yeah. yeah it all depends on like the person's attitude. Like he could have, maybe somebody could have said something to him or maybe he did yeah, something yeah. and who yeah, knows, you know? Yeah. So it's, it all depends on your, you know, how you uh, perceive the shows and stuff like that in the bands. Yeah. Um, when did you start playing guitar? Oof, I was uh, 16. So I was uh, a little late bloomer, but yeah, I was 16, so I'm 25 now, so almost about 10 years. Wow. Uh, what influenced you to play guitar? Uh, Well, you know, my buddy played, and, you know, I don't know if you, when you first picked up an instrument, it was like immediately like, oh, let's start a band, and so... Mm-hmm. He was like, "Oh, we got a star band. You could play the other. You could be rhythm guitar, you know." And uh, so I picked it up, and um, he ended up actually like right after I picked it up, he ended up just dropping it and just completely didn't want to do it anymore. But <laughs> I ended up sticking with it, and then for the, about the first year, I just played covers on YouTube. You know, I, that's when I discovered I, I pretty much learned off of YouTube. You know, right, everything right. you wanted to learn was off of YouTube, and um, then I ended up actually getting a teacher. I met my teacher at a party, and then. Uh, you know, I just kind of went from there, but you know, like influences like guitar. I mean, 
I'm an 80s hair metal cover band, so we do everything from Van Halen to Ozzy. So, you know, I love guys like Randy Rhodes, uh, Eddie Van Halen. Um, I also, Andy LaRocks and uh, Andy LaRock and uh, Glenn Tipton are among my favorites as well. George Lynch, Vivian Campbell, uh, Jeff Loomis. I'm a huge Sanctuary fan and Evermore fan. Yeah. Um, trying to think who else on the there, There's so many, but, you know, just I said pretty much those guys would be probably about, about my favorite in my wheelhouse. Very cool. Now you, now, you mentioned King Diamond a few times. What's your favorite King Diamond album? Uh, Conspiracy. All right, good one. Very good one. <laughs> I like that uh, one too. I was although like, it doesn't have my favorite. Song. Was that what were you saying? Oh, I, I was say, uh, although my favorite song is the Seventh Day of July, seventeen. Oh yeah, so. that's that's, that's really my favorite awesome. song. But my favorite album all lumped together is uh, Conspiracy. Yeah, I think that was the second King Diamond album I ever listened to, and. uh <laughs> I hate telling the story, but it's funny. <laughs> uh, my brother's friend was like this religious, very religious person. And I was just getting into like heavy metal. And um, she's telling me all this stuff about Satan and all this satanic stuff. So I was listening to yeah. Conspiracy one night. And I don't know what the hell. I think it was like um, the song. Um, I don't even remember what song it was. But just something that he said in one of the lyrics just freaked me out. <laughs> I got fucked. I got fucked up in the head. I took the cassette out and ripped it apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I think sleepless sleepless nights. That was the track that really got me into King Diamond. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, like I said, I knew Abigail and I knew uh, Welcome Home. You know, obviously. In fact, the first time I saw King Diamond, I actually didn't even know who he was, and okay. I was just kind of weirded out because um, I was probably about sixteen. Uh, they did that. I don't know if you remember, but they did a tour of Slayer. It was like a mayhem tour, and uh, they came out to San Bernardino, and um, I saw King Diamond open up for Slayer, and I just remember thinking, like, what the hell is this? And then, like, I kind of forgot about that. You know, I was there mostly for Slayer, you know. I'm, I'm a huge Slayer fan, and uh, he, you know, it was actually the singer of Titans Rap, and when he joined the band, one of the songs we tried him out to was Mansion of Darkness. And at that time... Tito was the guy who mentioned doing that song, and I was like, "Who's King Diamond?" Like I had no idea, and then I saw him do it, and he recommended me more songs, and that's how I got into it. But uh, now I would even say Andy the Rock's like my favorite, one of my favorite guitar players. Yeah, no, he's he's fucking just he's a beast, man. He's awesome. Yeah, and even <laughs> live, like they're live. So I ended up getting, I ended up, I ended up seeing him again. I want to say it was December of 2019. I ended up getting, I was fortunate enough to see them again, or seeing King Diamond again, and. Uh, like even his live show was like, you know, yeah. holy crap, this is awesome, you know. Yeah, yeah. I just saw uh, the Merciful Fate uh, show uh, in November. Yeah, uh, I wanted to go to that. Uh, my our singer ended up going. They, you know, the first show before he did the tour, he did Psycho Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. So my, the singer for Titans Wrath, he ended up going to that show. But the day they ended up going to LA on that tour with Creator, uh, we had a show. Uh-uh. I ended up go had ended up having to play. It was, I was almost gonna bail, but it was kind of a big show. So, <laughs> you know, I was like, do, do I bail? Do I go see Merciful Fate? I'm more of a King Diamond fan, right? So okay, the Merciful Fate. I yeah. got Merciful Fate a little bit later, but um, but I still love Merciful Fate. You know, Merciful Fate's pretty great. I break the oath. It's a great album, Melissa. Yeah, you know, um, I, and it's I love you know, yeah, yeah. seeing how much music here, you know, then hearing how like in the nineties he was like one year he was doing Merciful Fate albums and then he did a King Diamond and then you know he just kind of swipped swapped back and forth, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he put a lot of shit out in the nineties, man. I don't know how the hell he did it, but uh yeah. he did it. Um what else I was gonna ask you? Uh where can people go to uh find Titan's Wrath or do you have CDs or um so we we're working on that right now. Um we're still waiting to uh, you know, to get some more CDs printed, we did have a bunch, but uh, we 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 pretty much just gave them all out. Um, but now we've, um, you know, we, we I think we still have a couple of CDs from our old EP, the first EP is still left over, but I think all the new ones are already gone. Mm. Um, but we are trying to press more um, of those as well. Um, but um, you know, pretty much we're on every social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we don't really have a store set up yet. We're kind of waiting for until we actually have merch to do that. Okay. And then, um, 
but you know, if anyone ever wants a CD or you know anything, they're more than welcome to message us. But uh, like I said, unfortunately, we don't have a store. But Facebook, Instagram, it's all under Titans Wrath. Like I said, luckily we're the only one so far. So far, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, it's only going to be a matter of time before I find it. We find another band popping up the same name. But uh, you know, uh, same thing when it comes to our music. We're on every streaming platform. You know, Spotify, uh, YouTube. Pandora, um, iTunes, or whatever it's called now. Um, but yeah, we're, we're pretty much everywhere. So just like the stuff times around. Uh, we also have, a, if you, if you end up on our uh, Facebook or Instagram page, we do have a link tree that'll take you to all of our, uh, pretty much wherever our music's located. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can find us all on there as well. All right. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I wish you guys a lot of luck. And like I said, hope maybe you guys get out here at some point and we'll see you, uh, at a, at a show or something. Yeah, I'd love to. And hopefully, if, you know, if you guys ever come out this way, let us know. We can set something up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we would love to uh, play with some bands out there. I don't know what the hell's going to happen with this band, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. yeah, like I said, it's just the logistics of it all, trying to get that. You that's, know, that's all. Oh, and out. what is the name of your uh, the cover of the band? Uh, we're Headbangers Ball. So uh, that, that's Headbangers, kind of, Headbangers Ball, like the TV show? Headbangers Ball or Brawl? Uh, ball. Ball. All right, because that's okay. funny. Because there's, I had, I had an interview with somebody else a few weeks ago. They're in a cover band called Headbangers Brawl. Oh shit! Okay. And he's from California too. Cool. <laughs> okay. Maybe we run into each other. But yeah, we just ended up going with that. I mean, we do all the '80s. It's more of the '80s hair. I, I don't suffer for a lot of the hair metal stuff too. Right. Uh, like I said, I grew up on Ozzy and Van Halen, so I, I listened to all that stuff growing up. Nice. Um, was I say, but pretty much, uh, but yeah, we mostly play more towards San Diego. Um, believe it or not, Temecula. I don't know if you've ever Temecula. It's about in between LA and San Diego. It has a huge cover band scene, and uh, so we play out there. We're also starting to branch out to Orange County as well. But uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram. If you ever want to check us out, we're under uh, Headbangers Ball Music Tribute. Um, so you can find us there if you're interested. Um, but yeah, we. I, that's my that band's actually probably the most uh active band i'm in right now. really <laughs> you know, just, yeah like i said i i hate i as an original musician i hate how popular cover bands are no oh, yeah. it, and it's a uh, you know I, i'm making money playing music you know in the cover band you know and it's like it's like a double-edged sword you know and it's like you really want to do your own you know you really you would hope people would respect and like original music a little bit more than the covers but unfortunately yeah. that's now, so yeah, well, maybe but always I, I get, uh, sneak I in one of your originals once in a while. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, and like I said, we you know the in, in Headbangers Ball we were talking, and we really want to do originals too, and we we're like, well, yeah. how are we gonna do that? You know, yeah. Um, and, but even Titans for Wrath, like we even talked about like doing a King Diamond tribute or a Priest tribute, or you know some kind of metal tribute just to get in with the cover band shows, hmm. and then. While we're doing that, we could, you know, branch out and do some Titans Wrath originals, you know. So that's a possibility we might do as well. Um, we still haven't, you know, talked about that. Um, learning covers, you know, especially the ones we want to do, that like Priest and King Diamond, you know, that's really there's a lot of music, a lot of music you got to learn, and oh, yeah. it's te- a lot of, you know, especially the King Diamond stuff is technical, you know, mm-hmm. it's pretty, it's pretty great stuff, but it is technical and. Um, okay. So we're still just deciding if we want to do that or not. You know, California, the cover band seems ginormous out here, you know, so it's it's really cool to have that at least there for you. But um um but yeah, we we're still like debating about that. But like I said with the cover band, you know, Headbangers Ball, it's pretty pretty good. pretty you know, it goes pretty well, but still no originals. No one's really like I said, we wanted to do originals in that project too, and it'd be a little bit more easy, you know user-friendly a little bit more easier you're listening than Titans Wrath, but um, but yeah, we're still just like, yeah, we're doing all okay with the covers, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, at least you're having fun, right? That's all I mm-hmm. have. Well, Riley, thank you very much for coming on the show, and uh, you. I wish you all the luck in the world with Titans Wrath and Headbangers Bull, and uh, hopefully you come on the show for the full album. Oh, yes, sir. I, I, I right. look forward to it, man. Thank you for having me, Wayne. All right, very cool. And uh, everybody, com. hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.
Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Rats Eye Review Network. Rats Eye Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including the flagship show Rats Eye Review with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co-hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Rats Eye Review spinoffs, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past and a King Diamond podcast called This Broadcast Belongs to Them. We've also got Old Man Metal's Musings, The Right Opinion with Harrison Bergeron, Beyond Bushido, a podcast dedicated to pro wrestling and MMA with James Ilquist and Eric Adams. No relation to the guy from Manowar or the mayor of New York City. The Vieira Vault with Ralph Vieira. Schmackle a gob! to you too, Ralph. The Timo Tolki podcast featuring Stradivarius and Avalon founding member Timo Tolki. The BS Sessions with Mark and Jerry. Just the cheese, please. A podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam. The Friday Night Party with the great Harry Barnett and Evie. And the Music is Life podcast with Lou Mavs. The Ratsaw Review Network is your go-to one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsawReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Ratsaw Review Network. We're, We're taking over. over.